Hello everyone, I am Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team and I would like to welcome you to the Inject Creativity Live Show. This is an online show for educators interested in digital creativity. This show is live on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel as well as other social media and past recordings can be viewed via bit.ly slash adobe dash inject. Any teacher, whether an Adobe user or not, in any K-12 or higher education sector and any subject area, is welcome. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Wraithke. Gosh, there we go. Well, you've got me and let's bring Erin up too. There we go. You've got us both Yay! now. Oh, rookie mistake. Haven't made that one for a while. Welcome to the 50th episode. You'd think after 50 episodes we'd get the start spot on. Oh, boy. Welcome to the 50th episode of the Inject Creativity Live Show, the online show that celebrates digital creativity in all areas of education. Welcome, Erin. Welcome, Tim. We're getting all the gremlins out early and a special welcome to everyone who's joined us live for this special 50th show being recorded on Wednesday, the 22nd of September 2021 via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, as well as the Australasian Adobe in Education Facebook group. We encourage you all to say hi in the chat and let us know where you are from and where you teach. While you're in the chat sharing a bit about yourself, we would like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. During this episode, we'll be welcoming special guest and Adobe education leader from Western Australia, Drew Mayhills from All Saints College and his colleague, Arian. Peter Hutton, the co-founder and director of the Future Schools Alliance, will again be our thought leader. We'll be promoting the APAC Adobe Education Summit that is planned for the September holidays next week, as well as a number of other Adobe and education related resources that you can share with your students and your colleagues. We will be looking at some of the results of a recent Adobe Creativity Challenge with New South Wales schools. We promote Adobe Max and Clara Galan, the head of Adobe Education Community Programs globally, will be joining us live from Barcelona. And our behind the scenes guru, Adobe's customer success manager, Jerry Wong, will have a special quiz question for us. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, I can see a few people have joined us already and we've got uh, John Clark, who's been a regular over a few episodes recently saying hello. And Juliet from Queensland. Juliet has just come fresh from the QSite conference in Toowoomba, where she presented on my behalf. Thank you, Juliet. I couldn't get there, but it was lovely to have you there. And Michael Ha has joined us too. Lovely to have you with us, Michael. Another Queenslander, ex-New South Wales, ex-Victorian. He gets around, Michael Ha. And Bronwyn from Macquarie University is with us as well. And she's saying, congratulations, Tim and Erin, on 50 years. It sounds like we've been married for 50 years, Erin. Not quite. <laughs> every, um, I was about to say, every episode goes way quicker for us than 50 years, a year, let me tell you. <laughs> And uh, Tim Cosgrove, all the way from Toronto in Canada, is up nice and early in the morning enjoying a soggy Toronto. John from Toowoomba as well, who was also involved in that QSite conference that we just mentioned, is saying hello. Oh, we've got lots of people. I wish we had more time to go through them all, but thank you very yeah. much for joining us, everybody. It's great to see. Now, Erin, you've had a very special few weeks, haven't you? Look at this slide here. Indeed. Oh my goodness, that deserves a round of applause for. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and obviously, the... um, a lot of a lot of people, um, very important people in my life, put a lot of work into trying to make sure that the day went well and went ahead. Um, and and obviously, um, I want to thank everyone, um, especially you, Tim. You gave up me a bit of help as well, which I really, really appreciated. 
My pleasure. It was a delightful service. I was able to help you stream it using this platform, StreamYard, which was terrific. So that uh, yes. family and friends in New South Wales and Victoria were able to see it. So congratulations, Erin. Yeah, thank you. It was a wonderful day. Now, we've had an interesting day in Melbourne today. We had an earthquake. It was yes. 5.9 on the Richter scale, as they say. It was 10 kilometres in depth and it was felt all over Victoria and Peter Hutton felt it dramatically. He was closer to the epicentre than I was and he might be able to reflect on that a little bit later in the show. Mm. But it was uh, very, very interesting to have an earthquake. I've never experienced anything like that in Melbourne before. So that was dramatic. Yeah. And it's been, I actually, yeah. I, I unplugged today and I found out about it when I jumped on to prom help promote our 50th episode um, from Michelle Dennis. One of our AELs had posted and went, well, <laughs> I went, oh, really? <laughs> A fascinating day. So all Melbournians out there, we wish you well. And, uh, and uh, yeah, well, well, Roland's saying, hope you're okay. Roland's from the Philippines that experiences lots of earthquakes. So he's probably thinking to himself, yeah, well, what 5.9, you know, 30 seconds, what's that? <laughs> anyway, we've got a, a fantastic show all lined up for you. We're looking forward to continuing after this. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Thanks, Rob. Let's now welcome our good friend and the Inject Creativity Live moderator and techie whiz, Jerry Wong. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'll be looking out for your comments and questions in the chat and posting the most relevant ones. Now, to encourage you to use the live chat, I have an Adobe-related quiz question for you. Okay, what is it, now, Jerry? Name the free version of Photoshop that is available for both iOS, Android, and Windows mobile devices. There you go. So we're looking for that free version of Photoshop that is available in all three of those types of devices. Who's going to be the first one to we've respond? We've got a lot of wonderful greetings to us and to each other in the chat, which is fantastic to see. Has anyone given us the answer yet? <gasps> yes, we have a winner. And the swift hands of our Timothy Cosgrove. Well Congratulations, Tim Cosgrove. You're absolutely spot on. It was almost a trick, almost a trick because we had a, a recent uh, session from Joel Ahrens in Victoria who told us about Photoshop Mix. And, of mm. course, we had to Photoshop Fix. But Photoshop Express is kind of like the best of both of those and is available on all three of those platforms, whereas Mix and Fix, I think, were just on iOS and Android. And I'm not sure if they're on Windows. But it's, it's fantastic. And I'm going to share my screen in a sec. It's going to get things set up here to do that. Who else has given us those responses? Uh, we've got a couple of people. We've got... Uh, Ben's given us Photoshop Express as well as John and someone named Bright Shiny Things. Oh, there you go. That's interesting. And I'm just fixing up my screen here because I'm going to share my iPad. And I don't know, Jerry, can you bring my screen up now? Because I'm just about there, I think. Wonderful. Let's get that into full screen. There we go. Are you seeing that okay? I'm seeing it A-OK. -okay. Beautiful. So this is Photoshop Express, and it's a wonderful tool. And uh, it's been around for a little while, but it's just getting better and better. And I'm not going to do a full demo. I just want you to be aware that it is a free tool for you. What I love is this replace background in Mix, and it's giving you a little example of how great you can do that. Look at the difference between what was before and after. I think that's before and that's after. And then you've got these selective editing options here to show you the different effects that you can bring in spot healing in edit so just to do that spot healing if you want to be able to do that all of those features are available and if you go through this is just giving you little tutorials on how to use the product to get those effects and as we keep scrolling through the program you can see a whole range of different layouts and themes collages if you're setting up for a birthday you've got a range of different templates you can work uh, comic related ones, ones for parties. You can spend a lot of a lot of time if you've got it just working through the different features within Photoshop Express. I want to bring up this one. This is this is my favorite photo at the moment. Look at this one here. Mm -hmm. I created this for a special Adobe photo festival thing and you can see the before and after with my daughter. 
And it was rather special to, to do this because uh, my daughter's announced that she's going to be getting married next year. So I've only got one more year with her. And uh, it's just really, really special time at the moment. You should anyway. see if you could get another one done with her in her wedding dress. Yeah, you get the same posture and add that to it as well. Yeah, and then you can have, oh, oh, so many possibilities for creativity. <laughs> Amazing. So there we go, folks. That's Photoshop Express. I encourage you to download it on whatever device you want to work with, whatever mobile device. Share it with your students and get them to be creative. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. If you can jump off, off my screen now, Jerry, that would be great as I stop sharing there. And we're going to meet our guests. Let's see. We're going to start by meeting Peter. And uh, Peter, there he is. Welcome, Peter. It's good to have you back on the show again. Thanks, Tim and Aaron. Great to be here. Now, um, Peter, for those who haven't seen you on this show or elsewhere before, please tell us about your background and the Future Schools Alliance. Yeah, certainly. Uh, so my name is Peter Hutton. Uh, I was formerly principal of a school called Templestowe College in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, it was quite an innovative school, had an interesting journey. And for the last three and a half years, uh, I've been, or I was co-founder of Future Schools Alliance and we support 80 schools within Australia and uh, 20 innovative schools around the world. It's amazing. And Templestowe College was one of the most innovative schools that I had the pleasure of visiting on a few occasions. Peter, can you tell us something interesting about yourself that is not that well known? That is not that well known. Um, mm. uh, I was a tree lopper in a former life as well as an accountant, and that was before I had a personality implant. <laughs> ah, I love it. You see, when we, we encourage um, creativity, we encourage it in all areas of life except for accounting <laughs> and encourage creativity. I don't know. Would, would you ever pick on someone, though, who knows how to wield a chainsaw? Just no, saying. <laughs> I never had trouble with people paying their accounts, put it that way. No, absolutely not. Well, Peter, we're looking forward to hearing from you very soon. Let's welcome Adobe Education Leader Drew Mayhills, who's the Director of Hot House Company, an innovative arts program that connects students to artists, artists to opportunities and audiences to experiences based at All Saints College in Perth. I love that description. Mm. And Drew, can, we're also going to bring up your colleague and former student, Arian, as well, and uh, Drew, let's let's just get you to introduce yourself first, and then I'll get you to introduce Arian. Uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, look, Tim, Tim, you stole my elevator pitch, but I can, um, I can elaborate on that. Uh, Hot House Company is really um, a response to the fact that we have an arts curriculum, uh, which which serves a purpose, but so much of uh, what's left on the table in terms of opportunity for Creative, creative thinking, uh, complex problem solving, collaboration. So the arts is the ultimate context, in my view, to really um, leverage those skills and connect students to practicing artists outside of the school. So Hot House really sits at the the side, um, traditional arts curriculum, to bring that learning to life. Um, so that's, that's an excellent point. Good. Now, Drew, we, you're breaking up there a little bit, but hopefully we'll still be able to keep that connection going. Um, Tell us about Arian. I believe he's a former student and now an intern. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so Arian completed Year 12 at All Saints College last year. And one of the innovative programs that we have here at All Saints is that um, learning areas, curriculum areas across the school, um, have the opportunity to offer um, part-time employment to the graduating class in which they can continue to contribute to the college. but in a way that really um, takes some of the skill sets that they're developing at 12 and then puts them, puts them into practice. So Arian's been working with our design and technology teams, uh, a range of projects that uh, help elevate the profile of that learning area, but also have direct connectivity to his tertiary studies. So I'd, I'd pass to Arian to talk more about that. Terrific. For sure. Well, Arian, we're going we're gonna to look forward to hearing what you have to say about that very soon. But Arian, what's it like to be back at the old school and this time now as an intern you know it's honestly a privilege to see like behind the scenes what like how how it all works like i never like gave it that much thought and once you're behind the scenes it's like amazing how much work that goes behind it's awesome yeah. and arian I, I need to ask you what's your favorite adobe tool mine's photoshop for sure 
Uh, how did, it's really creative. How did you learn Photoshop? Now, I'm intrigued to know. That. I often ask this of students when yeah. they get the opportunity. So how did you actually learn to use that a magnificent tool okay. called Photoshop? Yeah, so I started um, just watching YouTube tutorials and I will just type up some pop culture reference um, that I liked and I like searched up YouTube tutorials to see if there was a video and I'll just follow it step by step. For example, um, you know the iconic um, Hope poster by Obama? Be that black, um, yeah, the uh, blue, red, and cream color uh, poster. I mm -hmm. would try to recreate that with different basketball players that I liked and just, just learn it from there. Just slowly step upwards. Wow, that's fantastic. Tools. That's so yeah. cool. Erin, we've got another guest to welcome. We do indeed. Let's welcome Clara to the stage. Clara, what will you be sharing with us? So today I'll be sharing more about the summit that's coming up um, that all of our community can participate in and updates for Adobe Max. So we have some great programming um, coming up. And as you know, uh, we're online for Max again this year and it's completely free. Um, so looking forward to seeing all of the educators in our community in these events. Well, thank you very much, everyone. We are so looking forward to hearing more from you very soon in the show. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Oh, there we go. I mucked up. That was me. That was totally oh. my fault. <laughs> He's back again. Sorry, Erin. <laughs> oh, no, hands off. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my apologies, Jerry. Now, you may have already noticed that Drew is a member of the AEL community, the Adobe Education Leaders community. This is the highest level of the Adobe Education community programs that Clara manages globally. And it's a very exclusive program with only 64 teachers qualifying in the Australasian region. Adobe Education Leaders are active members of the Adobe Education Exchange and are very passionate about using Adobe applications to enhance digital literacy, communication and creativity skills in schools and universities. They regularly share this passion with a network of educators wider than their own school or faculty and help support the work of the Adobe in Education teams, just like Juliet and John did for me this week at the QSite conference. Thanks, guys. If you are interested in becoming an AEL, the first step is to do the Adobe Creative Educator Program and get your ACE Level 1 badge, uh, sorry, Level 1 and 2 badges via adobe.ly forward slash ACE. When you've been part of the ACE program and shown that you are part of a wide network of educators, you could be in line to be nominated to be an AEL. It is well worth the effort. If you are keen to be inspired by in an international network of creative educators, connect directly with and support the Adobe education team and run professional learning for your network with free Adobe software and merchandise. Well, just before we play the next thing, I'm gonna bring Clara back up. So Clara, because you are the global manager of this program worldwide, I, I look, a question without notice here, Clara, how's the AEL program going? It's going really well. So we just announced our new cohort for the new academic year, and we currently have uh, 400 Adobe Education Leaders internationally. Wow. Um, so I can share uh, in the chat our Spark page that has each of the new Adobe Education Leader profiles, um, and we've welcomed some educators from new uh, geographical regions and countries that we haven't had AELs in the past, so we're excited to continue to expand. And we're also working on some small cohort um, working groups. So Leona Gaitis, who's my incredible colleague, uh, is helping to lead these um, small working groups of AELs, and then they present a final project at the end of the year. Fantastic. Oh, thanks, Clara. We're going to find out more from Clara very soon. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. The 2021 APAC Adobe Education Summit is being held as an online event next Wednesday, the 29th. Next week, this time next week, but the day mm -hmm. would have just finished. Well, well, and it would be exhausted by then, I think. We were and a huge day, but it's so good. <laughs> just today, I actually welcomed the 660th teacher who's registered for this particular event. It's amazing. This event is open to any educator in any sector, any level and curriculum area. 
It's going to be a wonderful program involving presentations and news from the global Adobe education team, including Clara and a lot of her colleagues in the United States. Classroom success stories and inspiration from local Adobe education leaders and lots more. It is a free event and you can register your interest to be involved at adobe.ly forward slash edu dash summit 21. Please share this link with your colleagues and wider education networks and keep that day free. Well, it is a school holiday period now for most of you anyway. Let's find out who'll be going to the summit this year. Come join the passion, productivity, people and pizzazz at this year's APAC Adobe Education Summit. Look at who's coming to the APAC. Adobe Education Summit. Hi, I'll be involved in the Adobe Education Summit this year because I love hanging out with creative educators who fill me with great ideas. It's such an amazing place to learn and then I can share this knowledge with my students. It's a fantastic opportunity to connect, network and share ideas with like-minded creative educators. Hi, I'm Erin Racy, Adobe Education Leader with TAFE Queensland and I'll be at 2021's Adobe Education Summit. I'll be involved in the 2021 Adobe Education Summit because I love being among the first to learn about Adobe's latest creative tools. I'm passionate about creativity and innovation in education. Adobe tools help me and my students to be imaginative, creative and innovative. I'll be involved in the 2021 Adobe Education Summit because it's a great way to engage with other creative educators. Hey everyone, it's Michael from Sydney and I'll see you at the APEC Adobe Education Summit. I love being inspired by teachers who use Adobe products and I love to find out the latest about the apps. Because it's a great way for me to connect and learn from creative educators right across Australia. I'm going for the practical, fun, challenging and creative experiences and to meet up with Adobe Educator mates of old and new to get that injection of creativity without the need for a needle or a mask. I'll be involved in the Adobe Summit because I love seeing what other educators are doing and then uh, being inspired to do the same. Adobe tools help my students and I be creative. I'm looking forward to seeing what other people around the world are doing with Adobe tools. I'm looking forward to learning new things so that I can use them in class with my students. Hi, I'll be coming to the Adobe Education Summit because it's a great way to meet other creative educators around the world in your own home and see what they're doing with their students. It's always inspiring. I love it. G'day everybody, Brett Salakis here, getting ready for the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Because it's an excellent way to be inspired by creative educators. Adobe Education Summit is an awesome way to learn best practices from fellow like-minded educators in injecting creativity in the classroom. And when the summer is over, we can then look forward to Adobe Max. I'm going to play this little video in the background to explain what Max is all about. Adobe Max is Adobe's largest annual conference event, usually attracting up to 20,000 of the world's creatives in one location. Last year, over 5 million registered to the virtual version of this amazing event. And we're expecting even more this year. Look up max.adobe.com to find out more. Being a virtual event, there is nothing stopping you all registering and getting involved in the 2021 Adobe Max, which will be held on October 28 and 29. Those are the Asia Pacific dates as a truly international event covering all major time zones. Adobe Max is when Adobe announces new products and new features to current products and the very popular sneaks segment where they reveal potential new products and features. This year, we have a very strong APAC connection where our very own Juliet Bentley, Craig Delmeyer Power and Dr. Tim Kitchen will all be presenting for the first time, as well as Sarah Madison, the Deputy Vice Chancellor at Swinburne University. Juliet will be sharing a session titled Fostering Digital Literacy in the K-12 Creative Classroom, and Craig and I will be collaborating with an AEL master teacher, Lisa Gottfried from New Technology High School in California, We'll be doing a session titled Giving Students a Voice with Character Animator. And Professor Sarah Madison from Swinburne, well, she'll be presenting the topic Transforming Education with Creative and Digital Skills. 
Go to max.adobe.com to register so that you don't miss out on this essential annual digital creativity conference. Let's bring Clara back up because Clara is going to be involved. Clara, tell us what your involvement in Max is and what could educators look forward to at this event? Absolutely. So again, Max is open to all educators and students in every subject area and grade level and is a completely free event. And for those of you who have been to Adobe Max in person um, in previous years, we usually host have hosted the conference in Los Angeles and California, but we're so thrilled to be able to offer it virtually so anyone all around the world is able to join. Um, so be sure to register and we have a special um, track for educators who have registered for Adobe Max. So I'll ask Jerry to bring up um, my screen here. Um, but if you go to uh, max.adobe.com slash session slash educators, and I know that's a bit along uh, URL, so we'll be able to post that in the chat there. Um, but you can register here and see all of the sessions that are particular for teachers. Um, so there's a combination of workshops, um, panels, different sessions that are all put together by the Adobe for Education team. We also have some sessions that are more specific to um, primary and secondary, some that are more specific to higher education, um, and in, with higher education, more of a focus on digital literacy. Um, so be sure to take a look at those sessions here. And then you can also take um, a look at last year's top sessions. Um, the beauty of it being uh, virtual, that it's all on demand and recorded after the fact. Um, so be sure to take a look at some of these. And then we have other resources that you can discover, um, whether that's case studies uh, from Winston-Salem State University or San Jose State in California, um, to the Adobe Education Podcast, um, hosted by my colleague, uh, Tacey Trowbridge, who leads up policy and thought leadership. We also have the Adobe Creative Educator Program um, in here as well. So if you haven't registered already, be sure to register for Adobe Creative Educator and you can share that uh, with your colleagues. And then in addition to the actual um, sessions at Adobe Max, uh, on the North America and European teams, we also have a weekly live stream show um, similar to Inject Creativity Live um, called the Adobe Creative Educator Show that is hosted every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. And we will be hosting um, different evangelists from Adobe, including Paul Tranny, um, to talk about some of the highlights at Max, different product updates, um, to be able to share with you and you can actually ask questions live if you're tuning in live. But of course, if the time zone um, doesn't suit because I know it's tricky uh, internationally, you can always watch them on demand on Adobe for Education, Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube channels. And last yeah. but not least, uh, we will be launching a Adobe for Education Instagram account next week. So this is something that we'll be sharing at the summit, sharing at Adobe Max. Um, so more to come. Stay tuned on our other social channels for how to follow that account. And we have some um, exclusive programming um, that will be coming your way soon through our Instagram account. So exciting. So many different things happening in the next couple of months. In fact, Clara, while we've still got you on the stage, I'm going to share my screen to bring up the summit for next week. And this is the actual summit site. And we're going to just scroll down through to the program. And just to remind people that the first hour is actually going to be on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel for those who haven't registered. And if you've already registered, if you're one of the 660 who have already registered, you'll have a special link with Vimeo live stream. So use that to watch the whole day's proceedings. We're going to have an hour on, half hour off, hour on, half hour off, and that's the way it's going to work. So the first hour is with the global team, a lot of Clara and my colleagues from the United States will be sharing about various programs. And then we're going to jump into a special section for people who are relatively new to the world of Adobe. And we're going to look at some of our low lift tools, tools that will introduce you to the world of Adobe, such as the Spark tools and so on. And then we've got these set of classroom success stories from Adobe education leaders in both K-12 and higher education who will be sharing not the how to use the tool, but the why and how it's been successful for them in their classrooms. We'll have two sessions of those. And then look who's joining us to help close the program. Clara, it'll be what time in the morning for you? 
I think it's around 8 a.m. Oh. or 7.30. Have no, to double worries. check. <laughs> You've already been up for two hours by then, I'm sure. Of course. <laughs> and uh, Clara, um, on this particular day, it would be you, whereas the day before, which we're having a special conference just for AELs, uh, you'll have Dom with you as well, who's our UK Adobe Education Evangelist, which is going to be really exciting to reconnect again with Dom. So, Clara, what will your be main talking points uh, for that session? Yeah, so I'll be sharing uh, progress of our global community, how we've grown in the last year, and some of the new programs that we have available on the Adobe Education Exchange and within the Adobe Creative Educator program. So definitely join us um, and we'll be sharing a lot of helpful resources uh, for the new academic year. Fantastic. It's gonna Thank be you a so fantastic. Much. It's gonna be so good. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Last week, we held another Adobe Creativity Challenge showcase event with a number of New South Wales year seven to nine students from a range of schools. Adobe Creative Challenges are all about working with a team to design and share a digital solution to a problem. In this case, the problem was that many people tend to rush the important process of good hand hygiene. The solution was to work in a team of between three and five students to produce a video, no longer than one minute, made with either Spark video, with Premiere Rush, with Character Animator, or if they wanted a real challenge with After Effects and Premiere Pro. Dr. Kitchen's post about this event features a number of the student films as can be found via bit.ly forward slash challenge dash New South Wales dash sept two one. Here is one of the clips titled Common Sense made by Charlie, Olivia and Summer from Sydney Girls High School. <laughs> to be inspired by an AEL, an Adobe education leader. AELs are passionate about the use of Adobe tools to inspire creative learning and teaching experiences in the delivery of either primary, secondary or post-secondary curricula. The first step to becoming an AEL is to be an ACE, an Adobe Creative Educator via edX.adobe.com slash adobe dash creative dash educator. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be an ACE, just a teacher interested in engaging students through creative digital learning experiences. The ACE program is a free international micro-credentialing program. It only takes a few hours to earn your level one badge and the focus is on creativity rather than Adobe. Please share this program with your colleagues and get involved. Who knows, you may one day also become an Adobe education leader. Thanks, Rob, and we welcome Drew and uh, and Ariane. And what pronounce your name right there? Yeah, Arian. Arian, there we go. Terrific. So uh, over to you, Drew and Arian. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Aaron. I look. I, I want to pick up on. I want to pick up on something you said, Arian, that I thought was really interesting. Um, that when Tim asked you how you got into learning Adobe tools, in your case, Photoshop, that. Sure. You started out on some YouTube tutorials, and and why I want to drill into that is is that sort of sets me up to explain why Hot House Company is doing what it does. When it comes to learning, my position, I wonder what you think about this. My view is that when we're we're wasting a lot of time in class, simply instructing students 
uh, on how to do stuff that they could be doing in their own time, at their own pace, rewatching content as need be um, via YouTube. And so have you ever been in that situation where you felt like, you know, it sounds like you might have been, but I want to ask, have you found yourself in class sometimes in years previous going, man, I wish I could, um, I can get what I need out of a YouTube clip. Can I do something different with my time? What, what's that been like yeah. for you? That's happened quite often over, over the years um, in like design classes, especially uh, where you need to use it. Um, I get, yeah, I just felt like I can learn it much faster on YouTube, just rewinding, just practicing it on my own, in my own time and just getting the freedom to try my own stuff. Sure. And so, so that kind of begs the next question, right? Which is, well, from a, from a hothouse company perspective, if we accept that students are, can learn a lot of the fundamental skills and there's, you know, there's tools and resources out there like the Adobe edX exchange, um, YouTube channels, all kinds of resources at your, at your fingertips, basically. The question then for me becomes, what do we do with that really important time where students are in the room with teachers, right? Adult facilitators of learning. And for me, it's about creating real world connection to curriculum. And so one, one of the projects I wanted to talk about today was, was one that we are doing with the year 11 design applied information technology class, right? So we accept that, um, you know, students are gonna learn how to use these tools and we probably need to provide some fundamental instruction and point them towards resources, et cetera. But there's nothing worse than learning those skills in a, in a fake context. Right, so making a making an event poster, for example, for a gig that's not even not even happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, how motivate how motivating is that? So, exactly. so what what we've done instead this year is we've connected with um, a mental health provider called Acbalong Commit. You might have heard of them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They're pretty popular in Western Australia. Yeah, and we've actually engaged with them and said. Um, you know, we are looking for ways for our students to contribute to society, but also develop their skill set with some digital tools. Mm -hmm. In this case, they're looking um, at working with Photoshop and Adobe Animate. And Actbal on Commit have turned around and said, oh, that would be amazing. We actually need to refresh all of our um, branding and animated resources for 2022. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, you've got a real world context. And I can tell you right now that the motivation and engagement shifts significantly what what do yeah. you reckon what do you reckon the reasons for that could be if you put yourself in in the student's perspective why yeah. how would that make you feel differently about the project uh yeah i can definitely relate um it's it's like you you have like a goal to reach like someone else outside externally that you have to um cater for which like is a different motivation compared to if you know it's fake for example if you get like a um quiz in a science class and it doesn't count towards your mark you're not going to put any effort in compared to you know if there is something like an incentive for it like incentive yeah i think that is and the thing. i tell you I, I hear you and so the from my yeah. perspective the incentives are threefold right in no particular order one sure. um students are going to develop some genuine e-portfolio resources that they can take out of school into the marketplace when they want to go and potentially work as a designer or freelance on projects, right? They can actually say they've done that work and it's out there in the world. They can point to it. So it's real. The second thing is that um, there is a client on the other end who is, is, is expecting a, a service or a deliverable. Their students get the opportunity to engage in processes like a creative brief, check-ins on feedback, um, refine the product and then, you know, in response to client feedback. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, like, almost strangely, increasingly as an after effect, then we're able to pull all that learning together and go, yep, that, that achieves all these curriculum standards. And so Correct. it's almost yeah. like we, by taking that real world approach, we get the, the mark out of 100 and we get the pass grade, et cetera, but we also get so much more. And finally, and importantly, students see the point. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. So, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, the year 11 work, students working with Akbalong Commit is one thing, but, you know, another, another piece of, um, another project that we're really excited to get underway is growing our film and broadcasting initiative. And so we've got, you know, it's interesting, right, because you, if you hit Premiere Pro as your first Adobe experience and you're um, not very well versed in the Adobe world or maybe you haven't had a lot of experience with using computers for digital literacy or digital creativity, Mm -hmm. You know, it can be it can be kind of overwhelming. There's a lot to come to grips with. 
But that's mm -hmm. precisely why I think the Adobe Spark um, platforms, right? So Spark Posts, Spark Pages, Spark Video, they're a really, really gentle and friendly entry point to, um, to making video, particularly for our junior school students. Have you had a chance to check out any of the Spark stuff? Yeah, actually, I, I have got some of it on my phone and I use it regularly because I, I do some side businesses and like freelancing work and I like run a few po like a few Instagram pages and I use oh, that man. to edit edit some of the photos and videos that I do on the go. So that that is exciting. Yeah. So like let's let's yes. talk then if 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 that's music to my ears because if the project yeah. if the purpose of these real world projects is to set mm -hmm. students up to go out and um you know, be able to hustle and, and get some work and, yeah. and be the masters of their own employment opportunities. It sounds mm -hmm. like you've got that going on. So t tell yeah. us a bit about that. Yeah, so um, initially when I started, it was probably five, six years ago, when I started to get into the freelancing world, I will do like mm -hmm. five, five dollar gigs for uh, people, like I'd remove backgrounds off of their photos, I'd like make uh, logos, small, small uh, tasks for them. Eventually, uh -huh. I grew it. I, I created a little brand for myself. And then from yeah. there, I started um, contacting people and I'd do like freelance work for them, like run their Instagram pages. And um, just having like the accessibility to all the Adobe products, like on the phone or on the tablet or uh -huh. whatever, it's much more convenient to get things done. And definitely. I mean, and, and yeah. the other thing is, uh -huh. I'm thinking about what your other colleagues might be doing. Um, to make their way through their university work. And it's probably not nearly as creative or fulfilling or entrepreneurial as what you've got going on. So it sounds like you've got a yeah. great thing happening here. Yes. Yeah. So t tell well, us a little bit about what you're studying. Um, I'm, in, I'm at Curtin, uh, Curtin University and I'm studying digital and social media marketing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that comes under Bachelor of Arts. And it's a three-year course. And it, I like the thing I like about it is like it's a versatile course that like you can – you do all everything from filmmaking to photography to web design, everything. And then you learn all the uh, technical aspects of, um, you know, getting your content out there. So mm, on the marketing mm -hmm. side of it. Yeah. And, so and ties given, in pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Like to entrepreneurial. Cut. Yeah. No, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting you yeah. off, but I think um, um, you're getting some comments here from um, some people who say you're a very impressive creative. And, and can Thanks, I say, yeah. you know, just getting, getting after it is so key. And yeah. one of the things, I think is really important given how much content is out there now is not just the technical capacity to use Adobe tools to make great content, but then what happens after that? How do you, how do you share it? How do you refine it? How do you keep it going? And so, yeah. you know, the arts, the arts is, is navigating a really challenging time um, in light of, you know, pandemic and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It becomes, I think, sure. increasingly important that we find ways to keep our creative juices flowing through through a time where we don't necessarily have the same luxury of going out and about having to explore digital channels yeah yes how I can agree. people how can people connect with you um from here if they if they're listening to this this conversation going man i've got an instagram channel sure. that needs some love how, how do they get in touch with you yeah so i have um i run a uh, art business art channel and i give these stickers out it's called uh chef mo cooks um, but I'm, I have a YouTube channel and an Instagram. Uh, I'm not sure if I can type it on a chat, but I can, yeah. Uh, it's, if you just say it, and then it, Jerry yeah, might be able to do that in the background and give it a yep. bit, because Jerry's very good at these sorts of things. So give us, give us the address. Yeah, so it's Chef, My uh, uh, C-H-E-F. My connectivity is a, a little hit and miss here, Aaron. So I, I, hopefully you've put that in the chat and we can, um, and from there yeah. we can actually follow up with you that I'm, oh you're back now amazing yeah so tim just, it looks like tim's tim's joining us to um make some closing remarks yeah so drew we we, we hadn't lost uh, arian it was all good i think it might be just your end but arian if you could just repeat that again so it was chef chef mo m-o yep cooks c-o-o-k-s terrific and hold the sticker up There's again no sure there i we just go. give Keep them out everywhere wherever i meet people i just tell them it's got a little <laughs> QR code here, so it goes straight oh, cool. to my channel and all my content. So I'm very like entrepreneurial. Little... Now, has Jerry got the the <laughs> hashtag it. right there? Can uh, you see? I will. I'll put it in the chat as well, so you can okay, just be good. Um, and uh, I probably, um, grabbed it and popped it into the connect, so everyone else can connect with you. That's oh, lovely. Thank you. Recording as well. 
And Drew, while, while we've got everyone on the stage, I'm actually going to bring Peter Hutton. Peter, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to bring you up on the stage as well because I could almost sense Peter's mind ticking over here with what you were sharing because so much of what you're sharing is I hear from Peter regularly about this is what education should be about. And Peter's going to be sharing a little bit later about his idea of a future school. It's going to be fascinating to, to find out what's happening in that in that realm. But Peter, do you have any comments for both Drew and for Arian about what they've just shared? Oh, I have so many comments, Jim and Aaron. I have so many <laughs> comments. Um, uh, first of all, hats off to All Saints and to Drew and the team at, at uh, All Saints in WA. Um, they have a great not only arts program, but entrepreneurship program, Propeller Industries. They're an FSA school, have been for many years. Uh, Belinda, Esther and the crew there, they do an amazing job. They're just about to start the studio school. But that's my little plug. For, just make sure you tell Belinda that, Drew, that I've, that I've dropped that in there. But <laughs> I can do that. Arian, man, like, you know, and, and I also want to commend Drew. Like, I hope people were watching the way that he was interacting with Arian, but, like, that's what we need in education, okay? It's about mm -hmm. treating people. I'd love to hear from you, Arian, but, like, you've, in that interchange, you're treated with respect, you're treated with status. Am, am I right? Like, how does that make you feel compared to, yeah. you know, normal school? Yeah, that's a, yeah, I felt that. I felt that just straight off the bat. I just loved it. Um, mm. But, like, my voice is being heard and, you know, everything's... Awesome. Hundred percent. And so, hats off to you, mate. Not to Drew yeah, and to Arian. So and like, like literally, we're we're insane. Okay. But you got a kid like Arian. You just put him in a room and you say, mate, come and see me if you've got a problem. Like we're getting in the way of this young man's education. Okay. And not only him as an individual, but he could support a dozen other little entrepreneurs. Sorry, not little, but like an, another you know, dozen entrepreneurs of younger age, you know, of the same age as him. Like, we're, we're getting in the way of these kids' education. And when they're getting out of school, that's when they're powering up. And, like, hats off to All Saints because, you know, through their program called Propeller Industries, they do some great stuff, but there's another level again. So, you know, if you're <clears throat> at a school and you're starting down that pathway, by all means, reach out to All Saints and have a look what they're doing. But again, even for All Saints, take it to the next level and just empower these young men, you know, so that it's not like, Arian, when you were explaining it, you were almost sort of like slightly apologetic that you had a side hustle, you know, that, that it might interfere with your education. That is your education. Correct. Okay. Yes. You're going to kill it in industry, mate. You're good Thank on you. I appreciate it. Now, Drew, before we have some closing comments from you, it, it just sure. reminded me, Peter, of some of the great work of Professor Yong Zhao. I mean, mm. uh, he, he wrote seven books about focusing on entrepreneurialism in education. And mm. if he was here now, if he was one of our presenters, he would just, his heart would melt to hear yeah. this story. And it's just mm. great the work that you're doing, Drew and Arian, and you keep it up. Drew, final comments from you before we close. Oh, look, I just um, sincerely thank Peter for his kind words and, uh, and, and Arian for taking the time because this is, this is time that you should be out hustling. And, you know, I, I really value the way you're leveraging this platform to, to continue to grow what you're doing. So I, I completely concur with Pete in that uh, educators who are meaningfully invested in their students really need to radically rethink that relational dynamic and just focus on um, amplifying students who are already on the path Getting, staying out of the way and helping when it makes sense to help them along. And we'll be hearing more from Peter very soon. Thank you very much, Drew and Arian, and Thank we you. really appreciate your time. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Now, Erin, we have over 30,000 teachers who have enrolled in at least level one of the Adobe Creative Educator Program. So please do promote this program with your colleagues via adobe.ly slash ACE. Remember, the focus is not on Adobe as such, but on understanding the importance of creativity in education. I was so overwhelmed by how awesome that last year was. I have actually lost which slide we're up to, Tim. Oh, which one are we up to? Slide 16. Oh, slide yep. 16. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have to fess up. Yeah, I was furiously grabbing links and stuff for how amazing that was. I actually lost my place. So we 
Oh, there we are. Okay. Yep. So if you would like to be guided through level one, there I am. Dr. Kitchen is running the next year creative educator course on Monday, the 18th of October from 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. For more information, you go to our new short URL for this site, which is adobe.ly forward slash creative educator. And I think that'll be Australian Eastern Daylight Time now. So that's a mistake on the script from me because we're jumping into daylight savings again soon. Well, at least oh, we are. Oh, 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 really dear. Sure I actually you. looked that up this afternoon and I couldn't <laughs> see it. So, yep, I'll have to adjust myself to that as well for you guys. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's carry on. And um, what we're going to be hearing very soon is from Peter, who's our thought leader. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. Well, it's now time to welcome our education thought leader for their five-minute gem to inspire us and make us think more deeply about the importance of our role as educators. Let's welcome our education thought leader for tonight, Peter Hutton from Future Schools Alliance. Welcome, Peter. Uh-oh. Hi, Peter. Thanks so much. Hey Erin, I couldn't I couldn't help but notice in in those marriage shots uh, that you married somebody called Adobe Max. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, yes, that is one of Tim's favorite favorite jokes to point out. So yes, I am now Mrs. Max. Nice. <laughs> and we'll hand it over to you now, Peter. Yeah. So um, thanks very much, Tim, and uh, thanks to everyone that's joined us. I'm I'm still blown away by Arian. Um, you know, I think there are so many lessons to be gained there. Uh, Tim also mentioned uh, Professor Yong Zhao. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with, uh, with Yong over almost a decade now, and he was a fantastically generous person who reached out when, when TC was not the innovative school that, you know, that you see now. It was, you know, struggling around the sort of 300 student mark. And Yong, for, for free, now don't tell him that because, you know, he probably can't do free for everyone, but he, he gave up so much of his time uh, to come and help us along the way. And, you know, Tim um, made mention of what would he say if he was in on that interview. And the thing that he always used to say, even at Templestowe and Temple, TC, Templestowe College, TC, Take Control, which was the what we called our style of education, even, even you know, at its most innovative, Yong would walk around and say, I won't do his accent, but essentially, Peter, there are still far too many adults here. And what he was alluding to there was that we've got to get out of the way. You know, it's not saying that there's not a role for educators. There absolutely is. But we're natural problem solvers. And so we step in often too early and we deprive young people. Yes, we give them the answers to their questions. And yes, it can be frustrating when you ask a teacher and they don't tell you the answer. But but we we jump in often too early, okay? And don't let the young person, you know, struggle enough with the problem or seek to solve it another way through YouTube or a peer or something like that. Um, now, Tim, I'm just going to talk forever until basically I see your screen pop up and um, interrupt me. So. I'm just warning. Well, I'm not going to interrupt you now because course. you've still got time, Peter, but you're going to share your screen. So here we go. Yep, just bringing it up now yes. for you. Beautiful. So uh, I'm hoping you can see that there, Tim. Looking good, mate. I'm hoping. Earth to Tim. It's looking good, Peter. Obviously, there's a bit Beautiful. of a delay there. So just carry on. It's all good. No worries. So. Um, I've got some really exciting news that I'd like to share with people uh, today, and that is that Future Schools, uh, which, as I said earlier, we have 80 schools within Australia, some of Australia's most creative schools and innovative schools, uh, as well as working with uh, 20 international schools, um, is actually going to start a bricks and mortar school um, in, in the Melbourne CBD, hopefully in the year 2023 is our aim. Uh, and it will be uh, the future school. It will be called the future school. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about today what, what is a future school. And the aim is not, in fact, to have one school, but it will be the first of many schools. And we will expand these schools and subsidise the establishment of these schools as rapidly as we can. And they'll be very innovative schools, let me say. 
And um, those of you who choose to join later, I'll be talking about some more detail on that and, and uh, about that. And I'd be uh, welcome any questions you have. One of the interesting things is that the school will actually be open. The plan is that it will open 365 days per year. So open every day so that no longer rich or poor at the moment, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, your station in life, you have to conform to those 200 school days and families are forced to take their holidays at times, you know, so that we can apparently go out and plant the harvest and then bring it in at an appropriate time. So this school will be different from that. It will be open 365 days and the aim is to have support 24 hours a day. So 12 hours physically present on site and then 12 hours um, in dark supported remotely. And the aim is to partner with another international school and we'll cover them during their dark period, their, their evening, and likewise, they'll cover us during our evening period. But young people, if they need help with their learning or indeed they need help with wellbeing issues, uh, they'll have access to somebody 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. I've got some of the characteristics that we consider a future school. I'd like to um, perhaps move to, because I realise that we haven't got a, a huge amount of time today, but I would like to direct you to the third one on that list. And the aim for this school is to be a net contributor to society. So I'd just like to take a moment for you to understand what, or to reflect on that and understand what we mean by that. That is, no longer will this school, will schools, in my, in my hope, is that no longer will schools just be a consumer of resource in terms of staffing costs, electricity, um, printing, etc. Et but indeed, in total, we will give back to the community, measurable in a dollar term, more than we consume. So um, Drew was talking earlier about the farcical situation of doing, you know, preparing a brochure for an event that was never going to take place. That will not be done in a future school. And instead, if, if we hear of somebody who is running an event, for instance, as, as they're doing at All Saints, we will offer to do that. Even though the, the young person might not be getting, but they may be charging, you know, it might be a little bit of Ariane's side hustle uh, idea. But even if somebody is not uh, getting a direct um, amount of money for that, we can work out an equivalent rate and then they will be credited with that against a roughly $20,000 expectation of giving back to the community. So, of course, they're not going to be expelled if they don't uh, contribute $20,000 worth of value to society, but we want them to voluntarily take that on as an aim, to give back as an individual and then collectively as a school more than they consume. Uh, you know, the, the next concept, concept of sustainability plus we all are well aware of, of what's been done to the planet and, and, you know, whether that's a combination of, you know, man-made and natural. Uh, I'm not a scientist, not here to debate. But if we're going to try and restore this planet to a better place than the condition in which we inherited it, we need to aim for more than sustainability. So this will, the aim will be, and, and frankly, I don't know how we're going to do it. I'm an educator, okay? Um, but I'm, I'm going to hand that, or we are going to hand that problem of practice to young people and say, how can we be carbon negative? And I, and I have absolute faith that young people through their ingenuity, through their creativity can mean that that campus, and the, as I said, the first of many, can actually make this world a better place environmentally, in terms of equity, not just returning to a state where we're trying to redress the balance of things like inequality, social inequality, race, gender, um, uh, identity, etc., but in fact, advantage those people, return them to a better place than just mere um, equity. Um, we want philanthropy, the idea of impacting the world in positive ways to be part of the DNA of this particular school. All right, Philosoph uh, philanthropy is not charity. It's not giving something to make you feel better. It's using your resources, your time and your money, regardless of circumstances, to improve the world and change the, the world to make it a better place using what resources that you have. And that's what we'll be uh, aiming at with the first of the future schools in Melbourne CBD starting in 2023. 
Very exciting, Peter. And there's some lovely comments that have come through uh, from some teachers who I think would be the first to sign up to be part of employed at your school. And we've got so many creative educators around. I love the concepts that you come up with. And I really am looking forward to helping support you make this a reality. And uh, the one thing that I'd encourage you to add to that list, if you haven't already thought about this, is the, the links with industry and to have that partnership going all the time rather than think that education can do it on their own. You've got so many resources out there, such as what we have to offer, what Microsoft and Google and Apple, and they all have people who are passionate about creativity and building those connections, let alone all the other industries that would love to get involved. But uh, thank you, Peter, for your time, and uh, we really appreciate it. We're going to be having a fireside chat a little bit later on where we can have um, some more Q&A with, uh, with you and some more in-depth discussion about what you've got planned. But Peter, thank you so much. No worries, guys. Thanks for having me on and congratulations on your 50th program. Thank you. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. If you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. This is a great way to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education and the wider community. Our next Inject Creativity Live event, event number 51, will be on Wednesday the 6th of October at 6.30pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time following next week's summit. Our AEL presenter will be the very talented Adobe Education Leader Brett Kent from the New South Wales Department of Education. Paul McLean will be our thought leader and we will have a special guest appearance from Dom Trainer, Adobe's education evangelist for Europe. For those watching the recording of this episode, join us live if you can in the future. It's always much more fun and interactive when you're with us live. For those watching live, get ready to move to bluejeans.com forward slash kitchen dot Adobe for our brief fireside chat and we will see you at the next episode. Thank you to Jerry and Erin for helping to put this show together. And also thank you to Freddie Clark, Course Development and Operations Manager at EdgeGain for making sure this show looks good on our YouTube channel. Special thank you to Drew, Ben um, and Peter and Clara for their, oh, sorry. And Arian. And Arian. Yes, yep. we've got a few name, extra names on there for their contribution to this episode. See you next time. All the best, everyone. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. For those who are watching live, join us via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters, as well as complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out more about dates and topics. On behalf of Dr. Kitchen and Erin Raithke, don't forget to keep being creative. <laughs> <laughs>